Good morning. Well, good afternoon to some of you. Greetings. I'm Joan of Angels. I'm your host for today's interview with, uh, hosted by Portal to Ascension with Trisha McCannon. And I just want to give you a little heads up about Trisha. I know so many of you know her. I met her first in 2004. I heard her speaking. She was speaking on angels at the time. First person I had ever heard that so spoke to my heart. And I ran up and I, after she spoke, she had this long line and I kind of well, flung my wings through to get to the front. And that began a long time friendship. It's been over 13 years. So I just want to share with you that Trisha, she says on her website, she's a, an, or a teacher, an oracle, a clairvoyant. I just want you to know that she's an amazing and prolific author. A, a wisdom teacher of sacred teachings that go way back to the beginning of time. And she knows these stories inside and out because she's lived them when she shares them, she's, she's in them. So she's a, a master wisdom teacher. She's an oracle. She's a mystery school teacher and, and a, a, a writer of books that have inspired me, Dialogues with the Angels. Jesus, and we'll be talking about the Christ consciousness, the divine Sophia. So I want everyone to welcome Trisha. And Trisha, if you're on, I can't wait to speak with you. So, so wondering how and thinking that you're on, and if you're not, I can interview myself too. So Hey, Tony. There you are. There you are. Nice to see you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy to you myself, honey. <laughs> well, you're fascinating yourself. This is why we're friends. We, you know, we both like each other's eccentricities and brilliance and an artistic flair and creativity. So, you know. Okay. Well, good morning. But I want you to know I'm wiggling because I have the paintings that you did right behind me that you encoded well there's one of them so i also want to tell everyone what a creative woman you are yeah, thank you funny. well you know you're a wonderful painter and you're so inspiring and i got to come out and speak you know at contact in the desert in june which was a great event in palm springs and you live out there so you know we you and i decided we were going to take a few days together and as soon as i was in your you know auric feel of your temple house which was so beautiful all your paintings with these sort of emanation beings these angels and masters and so forth they were all around it was so inspiring and you know Joan was like let's paint together and I mean you know I was an art major and I have drawn a lot of the images for my in my books not all of them but um I hadn't painted in years and it was so inspiring to paint with you and fortunately I didn't have to start from scratch I took your paintings that you you know you were working on other ones and you were like well I haven't worked on this one in about 10 months so hey you just have at it and that was so generous of you in spirit and it was so fun and it inspired me when I came home I went and got an art table and I got all of these new paints and so thank you so much Joni Joan of Angels <laughs> of angels so trisha several things first of all you encoded very ancient wisdom into these paintings and um to share that with the audience but but also and this is a, a good intro into where we're going to go i experienced in painting with you that day or a couple of those days inter an inter lifetime experience where mm -hmm. we were here in my garage which is you know very 3d and simultaneously, I felt that we were in these ancient temples where, oh God, I have chills thinking about it, where we walked with the gods, okay, where we, we painted, we painted before, you know, like I got the download and you encoded the mysteries. And so that kind of brings me to like this, con this consciousness of how can we be in this multidimensionality, like with the Christ consciousness, how can we walk in time? because that's what you bring for me and so many people. 
Thank you so much. Well, you know, I think we are multidimensional beings, whether we know it or not. We are eternal souls who have chosen courageously or foolishly, depending on your point of view, to incarnate now down here on planet Earth and to experience the roller coaster ride of, you know, all the many challenges. And as we know, mastery is not an easy process you know we we have you know what 80 short years to grow up you know figure out things like uh, how to get a job how to make money how to fall in love how to set our boundaries uh, um, search for spiritual enlightenment uh, open to our creativity learn about self-responsibility and self-reflection I mean it is not for the faint of heart it's the PhD <laughs> course if you ask me I mean if we were one of the gods, you know, where we had, hey, 400,000 years to figure it out, uh, it would be a little easier. But we are on the, uh, the fast track to mastery. And this is why it takes many, many lifetimes. And uh, Jesus, of course, and this is as, you know, Neil, our producer was saying, it is the reason for the season, which is the Christ, the Christed season, the, the season of Hanukkah, the season of many of the high holy days, which, you know, Hanukkah and that menorah is all about the uh, lighting the seven flames and those seven flames of course are our chakras from the crown and the third eye and the throat and the heart and the solar plexus and on down and of course the Christ consciousness is really about pulling that energy up into the heart connecting it with the brow and connecting with our multi-dimensional higher self which brings us full circle to your your comment and your questions Whoa. Well, you know, I, I remember having you in my living room once when we were doing a meditation. And for the very first time in my life, I felt Jesus was in the room. Like, does that, what does that mean? You know, and, and I felt him say to me, like, you're like my right hand. Well, I know he has to, I can't be his only right hand. <laughs> I, I have a feeling there are a lot of right and left hands out there. Right. So what does that mean? Well, you know, what's the difference in Jesus and us? He's a soul, we're a soul. But as souls, most of us don't remember our cosmic consciousness. We don't remember that we are, let us say, an atom in the body of God and that all the animals, all the plants, all the other human beings, no matter what their race or culture or creed or ethnicity, that we're all actually atoms in the body of God. We don't remember that there is um, a living presence within the planet Earth or within the sun or within the galaxy. We're like fish in water swimming around in water having a conversation about, do you see any water? I don't see any water. There's no evidence to me that there's any water. We're literally in the body of the divine. It's all around us. And this is what the ancients called emanation. You know, eminence versus transcendence. And both are actually true. In, in a lot of the Judeo-Christian religions, we've been taught that God is above us. God is outside of us. God's up there. You know, if I can only pray hard enough, I'll, I'll get to heaven. I'll be good enough. Is God listening? Is anybody listening? You know, so many of us have definitely felt like that when we've gone through that roller coaster. But that's, that's the concept that God is outside of creation. That this creation is maybe a, like a little, you know, a pond as vast as it appears with the billions of galaxies. It's just like a little marble <laughs> that God's actually outside. And some people think he's watching. Some people think he's pulling the string. Some people think he just set it all in motion and said, good luck, everybody. See you on the other side. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's transcendence. So eminence is that the divine is in everything. In other words, how could the divine create something separate from itself? That the divine is in the singing of the birds and in the beauty of the veins and the leaves and in the rising of the sun each day and in the magnificence of the full moon that's setting. That the divine is in you, the divine is in me. So what Christ realized, what Jesus or Issa, which is what he liked to call himself, and some call him Yeshua, some call him Emmanuel, there, there are many names, but 
as I talk about in the book about Jesus, um, the 30 lost, yes, is, is such a long subtitle, my Lord. You know, my, I have a wonderful publisher for that. Uh, Inter, um, Hampton Roads actually published that. And my acquisitions editor was great. I loved him, Greg Brandenburg. But, you know, I would have called it the Lost Truth and Secret Teachings of Jesus. And he said, let's just call it Jesus, which was great. But then the long title really says it, the the explosive story of the 30 lost years in ancient mystery, mystery religions. So, of course, this particular title talks right to the point of the book, which is that, you know, we basically know the nativity when he was born. We have the story when he was 12 and he went to bar mitzvah in the temple and he has so amazed the rabbis. And then we have this huge break. And the next time we hear of him is when he's starting his ministry, which most people think lasted about three years. And Luke, who, by the way, did not even know Jesus. Luke was um, a disciple of Paul's. And as you remember, Remember, Paul was Saul, who had persecuted the Christians and only had that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. So Luke and Paul didn't actually really know Jesus, although they might have felt like they knew the spirit of Jesus. And so Luke said that uh, they thought that he was a man around 30 or appeared to be a man around 30. And But in the Gospel of John, which of the four synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John is by far my favorite. John talks about the fact that he was talking to the Jews at one point and he said, before Abraham was, I am. And the Jews said, are you crazy, man? You're not yet 50. So as I, as I talk about it in, in the Jesus book, the chances are very good that with all the training and all the study and all the esoteric mystery schools that he traveled around the world and became a master of, that he was probably more like 37, 39, 40, 42 when he began his ministry. So he was probably in his 40s, although certainly if you meditate like he did and are aware that you are one with the entire cosmos, he, and it, it was more or less vegetarian. I'm sure he ate some fish and maybe lamb on the Passover, but by and large, you know, he looked very young. And But he knew his entire life, see, like so many of us, that he had a purpose. He did. He had a very powerful divine purpose. And I, and I think one of the things I like to think about is like this holiday. This, I want to talk about 2017 and what we're emerging into as this happens. But, you know, to be able to empower ourselves with also understanding that if we're the divine, we too have this consciousness within us that's been emerging. Like, let's talk a little bit about that and go to our personal, our personal experience with it, or yours. Well, let me just say, like all of us, you know, uh, no matter how evolved we may be in the higher levels and this is actually you know I have a new book that's coming out in September and right now inner traditions and I are talking about what it's going to be called uh, because it's very much about the soul and about the journey that we all take and finding our divine purpose and uh, that book hopefully will be out in September and um, one of the things that I really discovered through this whole process of writing these books, and they were very initiatory for me, I, I want to say that uh, I may be um, an initiate and a student of many ancient traditions, uh, Egyptian, uh, Gnostic, Celtic, Druid, Native American, Twisted Hair, uh, the Masters of the Far East, and I honor all those traditions because any of the traditions that brings us back into heart, brings us into forgiveness, that teaches us the, the concepts that Jesus was trying to relate, the kingdom of heavens within, you know, um, uh, forgive your, love your neighbor as yourself, you know, practice the golden uh, rule. Those are all um, core messages that all the great masters tried to impart. And one of the things I even talk about in this, in the Sophia book, I wound up taking about 200 pages from the Jesus book and moving it into the Sophia book that was about his secret teachings where he talks about the importance, the fact that we have a divine mother and father, he called it the Abba, Father, 
ama god that's very important and of course we've been taught in our patriarchal society to think of god as a patriarchal masculine and it's one of the reasons why our society has become very imbalanced in my opinion you know where women were suppressed for thousands of years not allowed to own property uh, we only got the right to vote in america in 1922 and 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 this is true for most of the countries there's some countries that didn't even get the right to vote till 1975 I, I think that was switzerland or Sweden or one of those Some but um, women still can't but, drive or, or in public well, right. Well, the point is that the soul has no sex. Although the ancients used to think the soul was feminine. That was what they believed, that it was psyche. Uh, and they believed that it was feminine because they believed that above the, the Divine Mother and Father was the one that combined all things. But they actually conceived of that one as the Divine Feminine. And this is because when you look around the world, who gives birth? It's always the female animals. So who would have birthed the universe would have been the divine feminine and part of the, uh, what I track in the Sophia book is a, a very 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 long period of time thousands of years tens of thousands of years where God was worshipped as the divine mother and then and, and during that time we had no wars it was incredible and so then and this is archaeological this is anthropological and then it became the divine father and mother which is fine because we are balanced or we should be balanced the universe is balanced even if we're not and then it became the divine daughter and son and then the patriarchy came in about three thousand years ago and got rid of the mother the daughter and the son with Christianity we got the son back but we never really got the daughter or the mother although certainly certain sects of Christianity honor the divine feminine in the Jewish sect they honor the divine Sophia in the Greek tradition they honor the divine mother of wisdom Sophia but this is all pretty hidden you know the, for the general public in the exoteric religions they just honor the masculine the inner teachings the esoteric teachings even within the Muslims the Sufis honor the heart of the Divine Mother and most people don't know this and what's so odd is here they honor the feminine and yet they suppress women and, and so we see this again and again in the inner societies of the men they're honoring the Divine Mother and yet externally they're suppressing the daughters and the and the wives and and the feminine energy from rising so that it can come into some kind of balance so when you talk about 2017 and beyond I think we have to look at the fact that this is something that must come to the forefront because otherwise we're sunk We'll just keep raping and pillaging the earth, the land, fracking, oil. I mean, Mr. Trump is a perfect example of the masculine. Right, 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 right. So Negative so I, masculine. Well, very, yes, of the yes. masculine on our planet. But our planet's been run by the masculine. And, and, and also, which sometimes is, is equated with the negative energies and the, the harsher energies. But we could talk about that in a minute. You're going to be speaking on Portal Ascension. I want to mention that you're going to be doing some webinars up and coming on January 21st and February 18th. And I know what are those, some of them are very fascinating. You want to give us a little preview, like is what you're going to be talking about? Yes, uh, the one in January is really about archaeological discoveries of incredible giants that have been going on for hundreds of years with real photographs of 8, 10, 12, 15, 21, and even 30 foot tall uh, extraterrestrial visit visitors that were down here who lived on our planet in earlier ages. And, we'll, and we're also going to look at fairies, the existence of these beautiful we've all heard stories of fairies but now they're pictures that are actually coming out that people have managed to take with digital cameras and that's so extraordinary so it's called giants fairies and strange archaeology so well, that's the point. add sometimes getting a word in edgewise that i've seen those images you've shown me this this i just want to tell everyone how fabulous this presentation is because thank you well, because not only are you this amazing oracle clairvoyant teacher, but you actually have a very scientific, practical mind. So you've researched real, you're inspiring me because you take this concept of angels and fairies, little people and giants, and you find the real evidence of it. So you're actually also an oracle researcher 
Thank you. Well, you know, my dad was a lawyer, and oh. so I really do like the science. I like the evidence. I like I like looking at, you know, it's, it's just kind of cool concepts that we might intuitively know, but until we ground it in the physical world and find some evidence for it, you know, it's very easy to dismiss. But once we begin to see the body of evidence, it's life-changing. Well, it is because you, I saw those pictures of the of the angels and the fairies, the slides that you show, and I've gone online and seen some myself and the giants. And, you know, it's a difference between, between saying I believe in UFOs or I believe in aliens versus I know they're here. Yeah, well, you, you see them. And that's part of what in the second one, the one in February, I'm going to talk about angels and the Anunnaki and the history of the Anunnaki gods. And, you know, I actually like the Anunnaki in a lot of ways. They definitely were human. They certainly were just as human as us, so they made lots of mistakes. They have lots of character flaws, but they also advanced civilization by millions of years by upping our DNA. And so they, um, you know, they brought us the arts. They brought us the sciences. Uh, somewhat, um, some of some of them were very benevolent. Um, uh, mentors to humankind and others were more selfish self-serving jealous possessive tyrannical self-righteous gods as we see in the attitudes of some of the patriarchal religions and so you know I think if we could unravel some of these past um, tangled wires that we have this hidden history it will help us to begin to say look you know thanks for all the good you did you know <laughs> I understand why some of us are caught up in the same petty ambitions and squabbles because they got caught up in those and we're like their children. And now let's try to claim sovereignty of our own planet in a healthier way, in a way that, um, you know, is, is, is more balanced. So that brings us back to the Christ consciousness. And by the way, in March, I'm going to do, um, an event on Mary Magdalene and the divine feminine. So this will, this is the female Christ uh, energy, which of course, as we know, Mary Magdalene has kind of been made out to be a prostitute for about 1500 years. And it's only in 1979 that the Catholic church rescinded that and said, Oh, sorry, we didn't really mean it. Oops. We made a mistake. You know, 1500 years worth of character assassination later, but you know, I'm going to talk about who she really was and how the coming of that feminine Christ is essential for that masculine Christ to return to the planet. Well, kind of interesting. So um, I just want to mention to everyone, by the way, and thank you for doing this interview, so hold your thought. But we're going to be doing interviews this Friday with um, William Henry and next Wednesday with Brad Johnson for Thank You Portal to Ascension and Neil. I'm just really excited about that to bring more free, just closeness and intimacy. You know, I feel like I, I have my fire on in the background. You know, it's a fireside chat with the angels. Um, also, Ma, I'm going to be doing a, a webinar too, January 14th, within 2017 and beyond and what that means for all of us angelic beings and, and shifting into those energies. So shifting into these energies of talking about 2017, what I'm hearing you say is that by, in, by stepping into the divine feminine, you know, and somehow aligning with the Christ consciousness, but from the divine feminine, this is going to be some of what's going to be unfolding over 2017. Like, well, let's look, at, let's look at the numerology, you know, 2017, wow. 9, 10, 11. So it's an 11 year, 7 plus 1 is 8. Actually, it's a 10 year. 10 so the 10 year. So 10s, it's, tens, it's, it's a new cycle. It's a new beginning. And of course, you know, I think a lot of us are, I know we don't want to get into heavy politics, understandably, on the Christmas season. But I think some of us are holding our breath about Trump. And I, I've sort of personally been praying for him to have a wonderful near-death experience where he's taken to the other side and he, he has revelatory insights and he comes back as the great leader I think he could be using all that wonderful masculine energy in a positive, life-affirming way. And I mean, I think he'd be a fabulous leader if he could bring, bring those two back into balance. I think that this holds true then for the entire planet like our yes. planet is to really for all of us over this holiday is to hold that consciousness because 
we all have all these different sides, but together, collectively, we can make this shift. We have to yeah. hold it. That's yeah, and, and it's, 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 it's no matter what it looks like, no matter who wins the election, we still need to remember that spirit's in charge and that it's going to unfold and that these are the times we were called to be here for 2017, yeah. the great unraveling. And we're <laughs> here for that. And we're the teachers for this, Tricia. You know, we are. Well, I think it's, you know, it's a, we need to know. We need to remember. Yeah, and I think it's very important, too, when we talk about the masculine and feminine, to remember that there is a very um, positive masculine, like there's a positive feminine. And those are the two paths we want to work on focusing on and the merger of the two, which is really is what the Tree of Life was talking about. It's what Buddha was talking about, the middle way. Thoth, the great Egyptian god of wisdom, spoke about it as the ancient way. Uh, Jesus spoke about it as the way. Mary Magdalene spoke of it as the way of the chalice. Uh, it's, it is a spiritual technology where we bring our kundalini energy up to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain and whole brain thinking. And when we have whole brain thinking, we realize that we can be us as individuals, but we are connected to the whole. We realize that we can be human and mortal, but we can also uh, be aware of our immortal spirit, our divine spirit. So we begin to make wiser decisions. As, as the Native Americans say, you know, we make decisions looking for it's seven generations forward. Will this decision ruin the land? If we do fracking on the land, will we destroy the water table? Yes, indeed, we will. So that's not good for one or two or three or four or five, six, seven generations forward. So we begin to think from whole brain mind, which opens up our creativity, our spirituality, our productivity. It's very practical. In the, in, the, in the 3D, let us say, corporate way, it's very practical, but it also awakens our third eye and our connection with the source. I'm all for whole brain thinking. I, I love it. I, I call it when I work with people, I, I like to get out and look down. You know, like my, my um, totem is a giraffe because they see 360 you know, degrees all around and they always have the big picture. Giraffes are wonderful. So They're wonderful. And, and so to me, that's like whole brain thinking, really getting out of our, our little self and seeing what's really going on and why and understanding that these are the times we've been called for. You know, this is we it, this a one year me to me means it's a time to step in our destiny and remember our calling it know? is it is and I, I want to also mention that you know this is what the mystery schools were teaching was whole brain thinking they were teaching it for very practical reasons because when you begin to think that way you become more moral you're not simply selfish it's not simply self-interest it's it's for the good of the whole you become the good king or the good queen or the good leader because because you're 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 the steward of the welfare of your people and uh, I actually teach processes to balance the two sides of the brain and, and, and as you know I have had a mystery school here in Atlanta for about 12 years about three years ago I finally got the first 13 courses up online and the first one the introduction to the mysteries I offer for free anyone listening that's interested you can just go to my website www dot Trisha McCannon or Trisha McCannon speaks dot com and look under the mysteries bar and you'll come to introduction to the mysteries you can download it for free and then if you're interested in any of the other 12 classes I actually have a page on each one where you see the table of contents you can read an excerpt and I mean they're inexpensive um, and you know I have students from all over the world that are studying remotely and so then I send you the discourse and there are 100 to 180 pages with processes and um, exercises and obviously lots of knowledge and you know me I'm such a visual like you are a hundred hundred and fifty images they're they're really beautiful I've seen one of these that you work and some of it you've read to me um, I've been able to hear you reading all of it and, and it comes and flows through it's so divinely channeled Thank you're you. so it's not that's not the right word inspirational I feel like you're one of those people who are living exactly what spirit has brought through you and and bringing in in your divine plan and and all the gifts that spirit all in one embodiment and that's what you teach us thank you in service to the whole 
And that's, of course, the whole thing. If each of us were living into our divine plan, we would not only be in service to self, we would be in service to the whole. And, you know, in this new book I have coming out, I have pages of the, the things that we have to learn for mastery. And I have sort of a um, let us say, uh, uh, like a, it's like a dimmer switch, you know, you can say just encountering this lesson for the first time, you know, <laughs> just starting to understand it in full crisis about this lesson. <laughs> um, think I've sort of gotten it, but still practicing or you've mastered it. Oh my so, God. That's like, that's incredible. <laughs> you can see where you are in your mastery of each challenge. Oh my God. I think I'm getting to like having to master some of them yes and I mean there's a lot to master this is why like I said it's the piece list <laughs> Yes, and you know, some of them seem paradoxical. For example, we have to have a sense of self esteem and self identity, and we have to have enough ego to be in the world, and yet we can go too far and become egomaniacs or egocentric. On the other hand, we want to be humble, but if we're so humble that we never put ourselves forward, we don't ever get the job done. So, this is why it's such a complex. Uh, course curriculum basically we have to master love and power in the right balance if we love ourselves but we don't love everybody else we don't get it and if we love everybody else but we don't love ourselves we still haven't figured it out it. that's just really a really good um, thing to talk about especially because what I like about the holiday seasons you know is that people seem to love more it's the time of year Christmas, where they give themselves permission to not just talk to angels, thank you, but to love themselves and to shower other people with love. And you know, the, the term moss means more. So Christmas is more of the Christ spirit. Oh my more. gosh, so you're feeling that because really that's an amazing experience when I walk around and there is this feeling of it's a tangible, palpable feeling. Love in the air. It's really wonderful. I, I've, I've had some experiences just recently. Like I went to breakfast this morning and everyone's wearing their Christmas hats and their Christmas bells and they're just being sweet, and loving to each other. And it's like, if we could only be that way all the time, wouldn't it be wonderful? I know. And so January 1st, then, where people start to put their Christmas things away is really new beginnings for us. It's 2017. So Maybe just even with this, this talk, we can encourage people to just practice this Christ consciousness, at least until your first webinar. And if you, and if you think about the 10, it's the, it's the straight line, the masculine, and it's the circle, the feminine. And this symbol was called the Shen, and it was a symbol of kingship. It was a symbol of that the Anunnaki gods brought down to represent one who is both in the infinite and the finite, who has the masculine and the feminine and balance. So it's a 10 year, it's the Shen year. It's a perfect opportunity for us to practice that balance of the positive masculine and the positive feminine. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and also numerologically, not only is it like stepping into your power and your vision, but the, the zero it's about a spiritual promise like should we fulfill this then then the gifts are us so i just want to mention again for everyone that you're going to be on a webinar with portal to ascension on january 21st and february 18th and they're highly recommended i mean i just love i'm going to get on and, and see it too and ask a lot of questions and also my webinar which is 2017 new beginnings um angelic frequencies, how to really activate yourself is going to be on January 14th. And so Trisha that sounds great. And I know I'm so excited. I did one last year calling all angels. We had a really good time doing that. And, and it's part of the angel training said teaching people how to remember who they are, why they're here and use their special gifts. Well, you know, Neil, Neil actually archives these. So I'm sure yours has been archived and people can go find it and tune in. And I just did one on the lost years of Jesus and the secret schools of initiation. And it was, I mean, they're inexpensive and it was three hours, fabulous slides. Again, Neil has archived these on portal to Ascension so they can go look you up. And, and if they missed it the first time, or they can go look me up and actually play it because he archives it. So that's awesome. 
I just really think, no, I actually, I, I wanted to do this interview because I feel anyone who has a chance to have a heart to heart with you, like you're so full of wisdom, but when I can get a little personal with you, and I know, I'm sure your audience feels that way too. It's just very, very special, hon. You're Thank you, Jen. Wonderful, you a wonderful holiday season. May all the angels surround you and your loved ones and all of our, of our people out there. And as we step into this frequency, as you call it, of the one consciousness and going into the new year, really confident that this is our year to, especially as women, to spread the divine feminine and to bring balance and harmony. So I just want you to know I love you so much. Thank you, Joan of Angels. I love Neil and Soul. And I know Joan of Angels. I just feel like I just want to spread my wings and, and spread yours too for everyone. Thank you so much for having me on and Merry Christmas to all of our listeners and uh, a wonderful new year in 2017. Yes. And let's just like, let's remember we're here for this. These are our times we've been called. And if you want to know more about me, just go to the www.trishamccannon.com. Thanks Joan for having me. That's a good one. And if you want to know about me, go to Joan of angels.com. No brainer. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. You. Season's greetings. <laughs> Bye. Bye.